My name is Ryan Masales, and I have a glioblastoma. Ryan is the best thing I ever found. He's an amazing father to our seven-year-old son, Ryder. He's had a passion for caring for other people. I had no idea what glioblastoma was at all. I was asking, well, what is that? And he told me, this is something that you're not going to um, win. Ryan has never given up. Giving up is just, you know, even in our lives prior to this, was just never something you did. We brought up uh, a subject that we sort of looked at when all this started, which was precision medicine and the Ivy Brain Tumor Center came up. Ryan comes to us from Canada, having already battled with glioblastoma for many, many months. He's had what we consider to be the standard of care for initial line therapy, which is an operation to remove as much of the tumor as safely as possible, followed by standard chemotherapy and standard radiation. And despite all that, Ryan's tumor, like many patients with glioblastoma, has recurred. The field has run out of options with which to treat him. When I remove his tumor in the operation, we'll be able to test whether the drugs themselves have gotten there and whether they're hitting their target. I was really impressed with his calmness, his eloquence, and the incredible support that he comes with with his friends and family. And there's an entire team in place to guide him through this operation, not only in terms of the preoperative steps, but in the operating room itself. Because of the location of Ryan's recurrent glioblastoma, makes us concerned about his language function, which is already affected to some extent. And so what we can do in the operating room is wake Ryan up for a small portion of the operation and go through some language testing with him. And it enables us to really protect their language function so that the operation doesn't permanently worsen it and so that we can still maximize the removal of the tumor. And our research nurses will be on standby in the operating room to collect that tissue. And our laboratories are on standby to process that tissue. So that by the time Ryan is ready to leave the hospital, get his stitches out, we'll know whether these drugs have had an effect for him or not. The surgery itself was a complete success. We were able to aggressively remove all of the tumor that appeared to be abnormal on the scan. And so it left him with a clean scan. His language function will not be permanently affected by this operation. So we achieved all of our surgical goals. Ryan very quickly returned home to Canada, really in good functional shape, in good spirits, and nothing that I wouldn't expect considering the kind of person that he is. He continued to push against the tumor with the available therapies to him, and Esteliz, of course, did everything she could also. We were gratified to know that the surgery did accomplish what it needed to in terms of permitting him an additional window of quality of life. Ultimately, Ryan's glioblastoma did what they all seemed to do, which is overcome his brain and ultimately he succumbed to his disease after an incredibly valiant fight. It did sadden the entire Ivy Center team and family. All of our clinical trials patients are part of our extended family. And Ryan's memory will always be held on by our team. And he's someone that I think of often as I meet new patients where we're trying to achieve a different outcome. Anybody that knows Ryan would say that he would say never ever give up. That was his one thing and he never did. He fought to the very end and coming to the Ivy Brain Tumor Center was part of that fight. I do consider it to be a very privileged experience that I have so that we can build on it and continue to open up new avenues for the next patient. So Ryan's participation in this clinical trial was certainly meant to help him, but he also knew that he was helping this larger community of patients that are struggling like he did.